Welcome to the field of classical mechanics. In this chapter, we are going to start off with the fundamental idea of kinematics. Uh, why do, how do things move? Uh? We talk about things like position, velocity, acceleration of and body. So body can mean a box, a ball, whatever. Like it's moving, okay? And this is the very important basic that links together with dynamics, what we will learn next. These two are fundamental. And dynamic is more study of eh, why the thing move like that, ah? Uh? Why it can turn, why it can fly. When you put these two together, you can start to level up into the other topics that we research and we are interested in a lot, oftentimes. For example, statistical mechanics level three is what we will see a lot more in A2, where you look at air got pressure, right? That is a macroscopic. But if you zoom into air, you realize, hey, actually air is all this tiny, tiny particle in air flying around. Like a ball that is moving, but now, in a very small scale, flying around. Or you could look in something even further, what we call fluid dynamics. Oh, this one is go to uni already if you study things like chemical engineering or some. I don't know what other field. So this one will be more of uh, if you have a continuous flow of material, let's say a pipe of water. How does the water move? Why does it move that way? It's made out of particles. Maybe traffic jam. That's also an example of continuous flow. And of course, the number five, a uh, lot of applied fields that grow out from this kinematics are things like astronomy, astrophysics. How do planets move? Why do they move that way? How to launch rocket? Robotics. I want to make a robot be like human. Means I must know how the biomechanics work. So a little bit of biomedical engineering stuff there. If you're like, ooh, how do I make prosthetics for my arm too? If my arm is chopped off, how do I make my arm do this? Although it's a robot arm. Mm, okay, construction, if you're building things, you're making machines, trains, cars, all, oh, they all come together now. But let's apply. We got to know the basics first. So let's look at also a very quick note on what is the range we'll be looking at. Ah. Okay, two things I need to warn you about physics, speed and size. When the speed get too fast, weird things happen. Very, very weird things happen. So we're going to stay in the low speed, the slow, low, steady. If it's too fast, when we move near the speed of light, weird things happen. Okay, and also size. When we, we go to a too small a scale, uh, also very weird things happen. Eh? So we'll stay on the larger side of things, also called as classical mechanics. Okay, if you're curious to know more about quantum mechanics, we'll see that a bit in, little bit in A2. Uh, relativistic mechanics and this quantum field theory, we will not learn it. Maybe if you study that further in the future in uni, you will see it. All right, that's it. Let's go on to the definitions, the key things that you need to know so that we can study kinematics and describe motion properly. First, we need to define what is distance and displacement and how these two are different. So maybe you want to grab your pen, take on some notes. These are definitions you will want to write down. So first one, distance. What is distance? Distance in physics not in English, huh? is what we say the total or actual path. Path here is the key idea of what distance is. Total path of doing what? Huh? Oh, of traveling. So total path traveled by an object. So often this is in terms of length, meters, kilometer, whichever. Lah. And this is also, by the way, a scalar quantity. So I put here a scalar. Means I don't care which direction you move as long as you travel this distance. Okay, lah. that's your distance. Next one that is close in meaning but a little bit different is what we call displacement. So displacement here is not a scalar, it's a vector. Oh, what's a vector? direction matters. So we can say that this is the shortest distance between where you start and where you stop, also known as the initial and final point in a journey. All right. If you find it hard to imagine both, think about this. Let's say we want to search up some location on the GPS. And I want to travel from some location to MCKL. Ah, let's say, so it's right here, MCKL. Beautiful. 
uh, where should I travel from? Uh? Let's say one Utama shopping center. I'm just going to choose some random place. Okay, so what we have here is the, the map. The GPS will tell us, okay, you start here. You go, go, go. You follow the thing. And then you finally reach your destination. This whole path, they will usually tell you a length. So if you see this tiny little thing here, 13.9 km. 13.9 km. That is taking into consideration the entire curvy, curvy road that you take. That is distance. But what is displacement then? Displacement means I take an arrow, I draw from start point all the way to end point. Let me actually draw that arrow from start right here all the way to the end point. And we got, I think I can pull my shapes up like that. Oof, can I get it? Yes, I can it. Okay, there we go. Look at that beautiful. So once again, we got a whole path we can journey along this stick and it has been calculated for us to be 15 km. Very nice. That's our distance that we all travel if we take that road to go from one place to the other. But if I just want to find displacement, if I'm an aeroplane, I just fly straight. Lah. Pew! Okay, done. That's a straight line. This is our displacement from a starting point to the ending point. Notice how I use the arrow. Direction matters where you start where you end. So this displacement also we use sometimes the symbol S, but we draw an arrow head on it just to remind ourselves sometimes, oh, that, that arrow because reminds us, reminds us that it's a vector. Let's go back to the definitions again. So be sure don't confuse those two. Huh? One is scalar, one is vector. And displacement also, just guess we'll write down the S hat, S hat, S arrow to remind us is a vector. Also in meters lah or kilometers, whichever one you want to stick with. Some quick notes, reminder of what you may have learned before in IG or SPM or any other program, is that this displacement is going to be related to another thing called speed and velocity. How long does it take you to go this 13 km distance? Hmm, what's the displacement? Let me measure a quick moment and this is going to be 9 km displacement eh, 9 km in a certain direction in a certain angle I, i'm just gonna say southeast how about that south east roughly lah it's pointing to the lower right okay how do i know it's 9 km well you see this little scale next to my shoulder all the google maps have this scale so if you ooh, you should try this how far does how far is it from your house to your school Pull up Google Maps, check and the, the distance and try to find the displacement. They should be a little bit different. Lah. But then again, how long does it take you to travel the distance? The first one, how long does it take for the blue path? It's probably going to be longer, right? 13. Let's assume there's no traffic jam. And how long will it take you to travel the second path? T for time. These two time, you can divide and you will get what we call the difference, which is speed and velocity. Now, if you want to find your speed, how do we define and find it? Speed is what we call the distance you travel over time taken. How long does it take to get you to school? I mean, saying, let's say you can go to school. Lah. If you are learning online, of course, you don't need any time to go to school. Okay, so this one, distance travel over time taken. That is the definition of speed. How long it takes to take that long curvy curvy path. Uh, but that, there is also another one which is more applicable to entire journey, where we say average speed. Because you may recognize that as we travel, you may not be going at the same speed. Ma. So we're like, okay, la, we find average. Average then will mean you take the total distance over time taken. Total time taken. That is if your speed keeps changing and you're like, I need to find the average. Okay, total distance then. Okay. Now, if we use the other path, which is the direct fly from start to end, it's a shorter distance. So you might take a shorter time. I don't know. It depends on your speed. So the definition of velocity here is a little bit more advanced now. Velocity, we have a fancy name for it. Velocity is defined as the rate of change of displacement right there in equation form it's also known as uh, velocity by the way uh, we use the symbol v right 
So V, but it's a vector. We put an arrow on top. So oftentimes you will see me write or Miss Lee write in the videos. V equals to rate of change of displacement. When you see rate of change, it will be ds dt, assuming that s is the displacement. This, by the way, side note, when you see a ds dt, or can think about gradient of graph. So I'm going to write this down here. I'm going to look at it a little bit more. So this is also known as the gradient of your st graph. Ooh, what does that mean? Uh? If you go back to this one, right? Displacement is S. So if I draw a graph, what does your this how does your displacement change over time? Maybe your graph will look like I don't know. I'm gonna draw like like this time. And I say, oh, at this point in time, what's your velocity? I find gradient. Gradient of this graph is going to be velocity dot. Okay, so quick note of how they link together. This one is a very important definition that you must know along with this fact, which you will see more later in a later video. Okay, so you say Miss got speed, average speed, got velocity and average velocity. Yeah. God, but we don't use it as often. But since we want to complete out our definitions here, mine as well. How about average velocity? This one, you can just say the rate of change of displacement over total time. So I'm just going to write here displacement over total time. On average, la, never mind your velocity can go up and down. Average, I just want the average. Uh, but they hardly ask about this. La. So in conclusion, for this section of how fast are you going, we have our two scalars. Because they are based on scalars, and then we have two vectors where the direction matter. Point this way, point that way. So if speed and velocity is how fast your displacement is changing, you can create a third one, which often we will use a lot, called acceleration. Acceleration is how fast your velocity change. Wow, oh, this one very hard to see on the map already. This one is like when you step on the car accelerator, <laughs> the car starts to accelerate. So what is acceleration? This can be defined as the rate of change. A, eh? you see rate of change again of who? Ah? The previous one was velocity. So this is rate of change of velocity. And we, of course, we can also come up with the mathematical version of the definition, which is acceleration is the dv dt. So how fast the previous one changed. This one's also pretty important. So make sure you know this definition here and as usual when you see a dv dt you should ring some bells and say wait a second wait a second if i have a velocity graph against time right here and maybe it looks like this i don't know i just i'll just draw something here there we go a, a, a nice hut and i say what's the what is the acceleration at this point Maybe I use a different color now, this point. This will be the gradient at that point of the line, which is also acceleration. Ah, that's what the dv dt means, no? How fast is the graph going up, increasing? Okay, is there anything else we need to know for this? Acceleration is also a vector, by the way. So make sure you add some kind of a, usually we use a. You add an arrow on top to remind ourselves. And the unit of this is meter per second square. We forgot to add for velocity. Huh? Let's add it here. Velocity and speed meter per second. All right. To summarize these three main quantities, let's look at a little closing chart here before we break and look at other graphs and how to better describe and interpret them. So number one, we have displacement. Number two, we have velocity. And number three, we have acceleration. These three are your, will be your good friends for the entire good part of A-levels. So let's say you have displacement S and you want to find velocity. What do you do? You differentiate displacement. So you want to find this? Uh, no problem. You differentiate with respect to time and you get velocity, which is also ds dt. 
because you differentiate it, ma, got the D by something dt. Then, if you want to find acceleration, you ask yourself, how fast is velocity changing? Rate of change. You differentiate again. Differentiate. This, this thing I write is differentiate, la, okay? So acceleration now is going to be how fast velocity change. So the dv, the dt. And remember, whenever you see a d something dt, this also refers to the gradient of a st graph. How steep is the graph at that point? Then for acceleration on the right side, also same lah. You can ask yourself, dv dt ah. Oh, that is the gradient of the previous one. So that will be the vt graph. All right. So that's our basic introduction for today. To find out more about how these quantities and graphs can relate, we're going to look at two other videos after this. One is how to describe graphs, and one is how to actually draw the graphs and jump between all these three quantities that help us study kinematics. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.